in an atom, the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and the electrons are in the energy levels outside of it. The outer electrons, the, the ones in the outermost energy level, are so important they have their very own name. They're called valence electrons. And when we look at the periodic table, there's actually a pattern of the valence electrons on the periodic table. Group 1a has one valence electron. Group 2a, see the Roman numeral 2, has two valence electrons, or two outer electrons. Now, they have different number of inner electrons, but the number of the outer electrons is the same. Group 3a has three, four, five, six, seven, and eight outer electrons. Actually, helium only has two outer electrons because it only has two electrons total. But neon through radon all each have eight valence electrons. Eight is sometimes called the magic electron number. It's the perfect number of electrons that an atom can have. It is very stable when it has eight valence electrons. Or in the case of helium, it's stable with two. So why does it matter if we know how many valence electrons an atom has? Well, the valence electrons determine the properties of an element. They determine how it reacts and how it interacts with other elements. So let's take a look at what you can figure out from the valence electrons. If an element is in group 7A with seven valence electrons, such as fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. It is dying to get one more so it can have eight. And so it's going to take those electrons from anybody that it can. It's just gonna reach out and grab them. And it will rip the electrons away from another element so it can have eight. That's why group 7A is so very, very reactive. Group 7A is also known as the halogens. Then the other most reactive group on the periodic table are the alkali metals, group 1A. They have one valence electron, and they are determined to give away that electron because they have it in their outer energy level, but back on the inside, they have eight electrons. So if it gives away the outer level, then the inner level is now full with eight electrons and very stable. So the opposite of the halogens, the alkali metals are determined to give away that electron and they will force anybody near, any element near it, to take that electron, if at all possible. So the group 1As very, very seldom exist pure in nature because they're so reactive, you usually find compounds. For example, you'll never find sodium metal sitting around. You'll only find sodium chloride or other compounds of sodium. In a similar manner, Group 2A has two outer electrons and wants to lose two. Below the stair-step line, the aluminum would like to lose three. Above the stair-step line, it gets a little different. They want to gain electrons. So if they have seven outer, they want to gain one. Six outer, they want to gain two, so they'll have eight. Five outer, they want to gain three, gain four, and gain five. So that tells you the charges on the ions. Atoms are neutral elements. Ions are atoms with a charge. They have a charge because they have either gained or lost electrons. They can't gain and lose the protons and neutrons because those are in the nucleus and they can't move. The electrons are on the outside. They're easy to get to and take away or to add on. So these are the charges that will be on the ions. If you have one outer electron, they like to lose that. Now wait a minute, if it just lost an electron, why does it have a positive one charge? Well, electrons are negative. So if you lose a negative, minus a negative is like plus a positive. Ah, that's why it's a positive one. If you lose two electrons, or if you lose three, remember, only the elements to the left of the stair-step line will lose electrons. The ones to the right of this stair-step line will gain. So, if you gain a negative electron, ah, that's why it has a negative charge, so see it's backwards. Negative means gained, positive means lost. And so,
these lose one, lose two, three, four, and five to become like the noble gases. Now, on the left-hand side of the periodic table are all metals, and the metals all want to positive lose electrons and to become ions, which are more stable. Ions will always form compounds with other ions of the opposite charge, but we're going to look at them separately for right now. When these ions get a positive charge, their name stays the same as it was before. You just put the word ion at the end. So lithium becomes a lithium ion. Calcium becomes a calcium ion. You get the idea. The negative ions, however, get a different name. Their name changes to end with "-ide". So a boron atom becomes a boride ion. Let me give you all the names so that you'll know these because they are a little bit odd. Carbon becomes carbide, silicon, silicide, nitrogen becomes nitride, phosphorus becomes phosphide, arsenic, arsenide, oxygen becomes oxide, sulfur, sulfide, selenium, selenide, tellurium, telluride, fluorine, fluoride, chlorine, chloride, bromine, bromide, iodine, iodide, and astatine becomes astatide. So that's how you pronounce these ions. Now let's take a look and see how you can use this periodic table to figure out the name and the charge of an ion. You will always have a periodic table on every test you take, even in college. So you don't need to memorize the periodic table, you just need to be able to label the charges on the ions and then you'll be able to answer the questions. So first of all, H. What charge would hydrogen get? You have to find it on the periodic table and it is a positive one charge, so H plus one. Then we need to name it. Hydrogen, we don't change the name, we just leave it hydrogen ion. After you write the word ion once or twice, you can give up and quit writing it. We'll just assume that the word ion is on every one of these. Aluminum, we look here, Al, positive three. By the way, the plus three, or the three plus, which is another way of writing it, you can write Al plus three or Al three plus. I hate Al3+, but that's the way the exam does it. And there's nothing wrong with it, it just bugs me. So this positive 3 or 3 plus should be a superscript. Superscripts are like Superman flying in the air. They go up top. Don't write it down, write it up in the air as a superscript. And then the name would be aluminum. An aluminum ion. All right, you do number three, calcium. Let's skip ahead to the sulfide ion. Sulfide? I can't even find sulfide on the periodic table. But I can find sulfur. Sulfur atoms become sulfide ions. So sulfur, or sulfide, gets a negative two charge. So, and the symbol was a capital S with a negative two. Or you can write S2 minus, that would also be acceptable. You don't have to write that, you just need to write one of them. When you find N on the periodic table, here's N with a negative three charge. Nitrogen becomes nitride. Be careful, it's easy to forget that the negatives all have to end in ide. So the nitride. Ion. We're just going to leave off the word ion. We'll assume that it's there. And of course it has a negative three charge. By the way, when we write a positive one, we can write H plus one, we can write H one plus, or we can write H plus. The one is not required. However, unlike math, the positive is required. You must write a positive or a negative to tell which type of ion you have. Positive ions are known as cations. Cats are positive, I like cats. So cations are positive ions. And anion is a negative ion. Anions are spelled A-N-I-O-N-S and it kind of spells it, a negative ion. 
And then as we said, cations, it looks like cations, but it's not, it's cations, are positive ions. So this is a hydrogen cation, an aluminum cation, and a sulfide anion, if you want to be even more particular. All right, so using only your periodic table, find each of these elements and write the name, the formula, and don't forget about the charge. Also, please turn in your labeled periodic table, labeled with the charges and labeled with the valence electrons. If you don't have a printer, you can sketch the general shape of the periodic table like this and then you can label it on your sheet of paper. Take a photo and turn it in.